Hello YouTube, fellow math teachers and math students, Devor here, and we are going to be examining the task Cafeteria Actions and Reactions from the Mathematics Visions Project Math 1 textbook. Cafeteria Actions and Reactions is in the Module 1 section. The purpose of this task is for us to figure out how to use word problems to help us build algebraic expressions. Let's use this top one as an example. We have Elvira, the cafeteria manager. She's received a shipment of new trays with the logo prominently displayed in the middle of the tray. She unloads four carts of trays in the pizza line and she isn't gonna be able to unload anymore. A couple of minutes after kids start coming through to get lunch, 24 students have gone through the pizza line and they've taken a tray with them. So Elvira decides to take the rest of the trays that are in the pizza line and distributing them into the other two lines in the cafeteria, making three equal lines. She notices that when she puts them in, you know, where the trays are, that there are 12 trays in each line. She wants to figure out, without having to go back and check, how many trays were in each carton that she unloaded at the beginning of the day. Here we're going to have x represent the number of trays in a carton. We're going to use our algebra skills to build the equation that we will use to solve this. She starts out with four cartons. So we have four cartons with X number of trays in them. She puts them out. We take that total. 24 students took carts away. So we minus 24 there. And then whatever is left over is divided equally into three lines. When she's done, she has 12 in each line. We're going to use our algebra skills just to get x by itself. To get rid of that fraction, we multiply both sides by 3. We are left with 4x, four 4x uh, four minus 24 equals 36. We add 24 to both sides. This is just our regular algebra process here. 4x equals 60. Divide both sides by 4, we get x equals 15. What this really means, what that x equals 15 means, it means that there are 15 trays in each carton. That is really what that 15 means. And you saw how I just built that equation. I went through each line and I did stuff to my variable in the order that it was given so that I could figure out how many trays were in each carton. You could also work backwards. I have had several students work backwards where they start out with 12 trays, they figure out how many there were before they were split up, and they just work backwards, much like we did going through the algebra. However works for you is what you should use. The next couple of problems are going to build off these bullet points right here. Let's take a look. Elvira wants to collect data about how many students use each of the tables during a lunch period. She's recorded some data on post-it notes to analyze later. Here are her notes. Some students sat at the front table. She wasn't able to count. She got distracted by something. Each of the students at the front table have been joined by a friend, so the number of students at the table double. Four more students take seats with the students at the front table. And the students at the front table separated into three equal sized groups, and two of those groups left, leaving only one third of the students at the table. And as the lunch period ended, there were still 12 students at the front table. Unfortunately, Elvira did not keep very good track of her records. The middle three bullet points, she doesn't actually know what order they went in. The only order that she is absolutely sure of is that some students started sitting at the front table at the beginning of the period, and as the bell rang, there were 12 students at that front table she was able to check. But everything else, she knows it happens, she just doesn't exactly know when. Let's use the thing we want to figure out 
is we want to figure out if the order of those post-it notes matters. And this is something that you need to think about in terms of your algebra, something that um, something that'd be useful to think about here is what happens to a number if you add something to it and then multiply it by two. And then if you take that same number, you multiply it by two first and then add. See if you can get different numbers that way. That's really what I want you to look at for part two. Part three we'll do together. Here we have our problem. We have this equation. This equation was generated by putting the events up above in a certain order. We need to figure out what order the notes went. Oops, there's a typo there. We'll do this one together and then the rest of them you could probably do by yourself. Here we have 2 times the quantity x plus 4 divided by 3 equals 12. When we want to figure out which one came first, we use a similar kind of methodology that I used at the problem that we did at the beginning, where we are doing things just building from the inside out. By using that methodology, we see that the first thing that we do to x before we do anything is we add, we add four students. Then we look at the next logical operation that we can do. And we it's tempting to say, and it's totally right if you say that we multiply, we multiply by two next, and then we divide by three. Let's do the algebra now, and let's figure out how many students were sitting at the front table at the beginning of the period. To get rid of the fraction, we multiply both sides by 3. We end up with 2 times the quantity x plus 4 equals 36. And we have a choice here. The most common one is we, the most common choice I see kids making is you can distribute the 2 throughout your equation. Let's go ahead and do that. 2 times x is 2x. 4 times 2 is 8. Equals 36. And then we have, we subtract 8 from both sides, which gives us 2x equals 28. Divide both sides by 2, and we get x equals 14. We end our equation here with, there were 14 students at the front table at the start of the period. That's really all you need to do. The, I am happy with this, where you say what order everything goes in, then show me the algebra by which you figure out how many students are at the front table at the start of the period. I leave the next two problems for you to do now that we have this example. And as always, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, feel free to talk to me during my office hours, shoot me an email, send me a message on this channel, and I will be more than happy to help you out. So this is Devor signing out. If you, you know, like I said, just hit me up if you have any questions. And as always, please remember, be awesome.